rallies are very tricky to understand in Game of Thrones Mobile. The active fight is very long and possibly confusing if you are unaware what is going on. So let's explain about the rally functions, but also how the battle progresses and what everyone's role is in the rally battle. Because everything matters. The commanders of each member, the troops and even the skills. You can set a rally by selecting the XL Fortress and then choose Rally and Attack. And a rally can be set for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes or 8 hours. 5 and 10 minutes you often choose if you have enough people online, 30 if you are unsure and 8 hours mainly if you want to hide troops during an attack. This is called a fake rally. When you click on your buffs, both rally leader and rally members can proc buffs like total attack, but also buffs like army size. If you don't have any, don't waste your gold on it too much. You can then set the rally. Of course you have to select your troops and people can join by clicking on the flag above your castle. They see a very visual indicator that the rally is going to that specific fortress which helps other alliances also see that somebody is already going for that fortress so you don't have any mix-ups. You can also find the rally when you click on the house button and then go to rallies. To obtain rewards from rallies, you use rally command flags. And even if you don't have any, you can still launch a rally or join a rally. But you will not receive any rewards. This can be handy if you need to hit rallies for nobility quests or you want to help your house members out. It is vital for everyone to send their best troops and commanders fitting to those troops, as well as only send commanders who have active skills for combat that boost your allies or help boost your own troops. For example, Sag's Earth Strike. Sag will jump to the defense of allies on the back row to absorb damage. Or for example, Rob's Young Wolf Strike, who will create a stacking buff each time someone's infantry attack. Don't try to send commanders that don't have a good active skill for combat, unless it means you can send a lot more troops or you have a lot more damage output due to the commander being much stronger. And this is highly important. Because the only thing that the rally leader really determines is the size of the rally based on your bannerman's hell level. Every single member of the rally will use his own commanders to fight. And you can also see that in the rally screen and the battle reports. When you press the arrow down you can see all the players who joined and their commanders. For example, Alessana's wild hunt doesn't do much for the rally. But if you bring decent gear, your bowman will actually have decent damage output anyway. And while for example Barret might not have any gear, but his Vestige of War will have a great effect in the battle. Now the best commanders are of course the commanders that boosts everyone's attack. For example Ronel will have the Rogue's Tune and increase all Relic Bowmen attack by 17%. And those are the best commanders to send along. And that means everyone has to bring commanders boosting their own troops. For example, Meshuga brings two cavalry and two spearmen, and that perfectly aligns with the great amount of cavalry and spearmen he's actually sending. And also in the stats you'll see the cavalry attack and the spearmen attack is mostly boosted, and that's important because all his troops are pretty much cavalry and spearmen. To test this, Reaper, Ximen and Missim all sent 10k veteran infantry only. And the only difference in this was as Reaper has 136% infantry attack, while Ximen has only 27% and Missim has 22%. Missim also did not send any commanders. And as we see the fight progressing, we see that Reaper brings 9.6k and attack the fortress commander and kills 502 troops. Then later, Ximen's infantry attack 9.3k but only kills 283. And a little later, Missim's 9.3k infantry attacks as well and only kills 270. Seeing the difference in damage and kills confirms that the stat of the rally leader never apply. But everyone fights with their own stats. And of course, Ronel's skill confirms that as well. Because there wouldn't be a skill called boosting rallied stats if there wasn't actually a thing called rallied stats. It would just be called increased bowman attack. Just like Miranda increases just Spearman health for the troops she's leading. Of course, if you can imagine that, there might be some 
stacking potential if multiple people will bring a Ronel, for example, and they all would boost each other. However, this wouldn't work because something else entirely. We had more people joining that fight. For instance, Meshuga. And Meshuga also sent 10k infantry. However, no matter how far we look, Meshuga will never enter the fight. And that's because of the following thing. As you can see, two of our spearmen got instantly killed and they become a tombstone. And they cannot be replaced because nobody else brought spearmen. Meshuga never joins this fight, no matter how far we look, until the enemy is dead. Because the infantry brought is the infantry of Reaper, the infantry of Ximen, and the infantry of Missim. As long as they don't die, the infantry of Meshuga will not join the fight. So they will just stand in backup. So that means of every troop type, three commanders attack. Now Reaper will also bring his bowmen because they are just the strongest. So the strongest troops come first. And as long as they keep living, for example now Renuk gets defeated. And there's no replacement for his cavalry at least because nobody else sent cavalry. So your team gets weaker when the reserves start to get depleted. Knowing this, what you want to do in your house is make sure everyone specializes on one or two troop types. When the Reaper will specialize on infantry and bowmen, somebody else has to bring the strong cavalry and spearmen formations. And that also means if you want to set up a good rally, you're going to need at least three strong infantry commanders. That is your main front line. And then also try to get either from the same commanders or from new commanders, strong cavalry, strong spearmen and strong bowmen. And if possible, also bring some backup. Even if someone just brings infantry, but it's so strong that it won't break, you already have someone with great value in your team. Now this brings a lot of potential to misery fail if you don't have enough balance or actually really excel in battle in relic formation if you spread your expertise and power amongst your house members. So in short, you have 12 slots, three of each, those will be refilled if one slot dies by a commander waiting in backup. If you scout any NPC target, you will see their stats and you want to try to at least have about the same stats as them and at least the same troop amount as them, of course, before you even start attacking this. Because you can imagine that you might be strong enough, but many of your house members might not be and they will weaken your rally very much. Now, I know this is pretty complicated stuff, but I hope this will help you understand how rallies actually work, how every battle actually work, and I'll see you in the game. And don't forget, our house is still open. We have 59 members now and we upped the number a little bit so we can have more members. So if you want to try it out, jump to Kingdom 7 before your castle hits level 6 and join us on the coordinates mentioned here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you want to. Have your friends play it with you.